How disappointing. No costumes? I thought this was a I thought this was a lively bunch. Oh, those are the costumes, huh? Well, it's a big day, as you know. It's Nick Saban's birthday, so I want to wish him a happy birthday to start this off and maybe that'll soften things up uh, a little bit. Um, but uh, you can you can uh, always start a press conference by throwing a little happy birthday wish out to your uh, your opposing uh, coach. Um, start with, uh, you know, our guys obviously had uh, some active recovery over the last couple of days. Uh, we'll be back out on the field today, um, getting our guys moving around and preparing for, you know, Alabama. Uh, and, you know, certainly what's to say about uh, Alabama other than consistency, uh, excellence, um, you know, arguably the greatest head coach in, in college football history and, and Nick Saban. I have a great deal of respect for Nick and uh, what he's accomplished and what he's done for, for college football. And uh, great players. It starts with, uh, you know, Bryce Young. I mean, you know, the Heisman Trophy winner uh, is a playmaker. Uh, when it comes to making plays on the field, um, you know, you just put on the film and you watch him. Um, it's, uh, it's pretty amazing, some of the plays that he makes. And, and he's a quarterback. Uh, he's a quarterback that um, is talented. Uh, he's not making it up, but he is improvising and making plays, and he's elite. Uh, that's all I can say. It's a um, pretty, pretty terrific player. And he's got a great running back in, in Jameer Gibbs, um, who I got to see firsthand at Georgia Tech, uh, but he is surrounded with um, – you know, certainly a very good offensive line uh, and talented players. So, you know, very uh, explosive offense, and it's led by, you know, obviously uh, one of the one of the great players in college football on defense. Um, you know, you start with Anderson, um, who's, you know, an elite defensive player, elite in terms of not only his ability to rush the passer, but what they ask him to do. He's an unselfish player. Um, you know, he plays, he plays a four technique, he plays a five, uh, he stands up, uh, he does a little bit of everything, does a lot of different jobs. That's why he's going to be a great NFL player as well. Um, but, you know, on the other side, Turner um, playing into the boundary is, uh, is, is an outstanding football player. So you can't just say, hey, you know, we're going to fan and, you know, we're going to slide to one side. You've got problems on both sides, you know, when you talk about both of these ends. Massive inside, you know, um, Oates and Dale and, you know, they, they roll so many guys at you, Smith and Young. I mean, it, it's, it's deep and talented inside. Uh, the two inside backers, you know, um, outstanding players. Um, and, and, again, you know, I think you talk about in, in, in their – Entirety, in entirety, the defensive structure is sound and fundamental, and um, you know they just do a really good job of coaching. So this is a well-coached football team with uh, elite talent uh, that knows how to win uh, and has played at this level consistently for year in and year out. So, so what do we have to do? Um, you know, the first thing we need to do is just understand that you know you you have to take this game and think about how you got here. Uh, and, and we've done it by uh, our preparation. We've prepared well. Uh, we have focused on, you know, playing our best when our best is needed. Um, we can't be distracted by, you know, this is a big game or this is Alabama. That's not going to help us in this situation. What's going to help us is playing our best when our best is needed. And our best players are going to have to play well. We're going to have to play consistently for four quarters. We, we must get off to a good start because we've shown that we're going to play well in the second half, but we have to play well for four quarters. And we have to play consistently, um, one play at a time. And all the basic tenets of, of a game like this is it, it's a, that's why you come to LSU. Um, it, it's, uh, 
it's not pressure. It's a privilege to play in games like this. Uh, certainly why I came to LSU, to, to want to play in games like this. But, you know, all of the noise, all of the other things are just distractions. This is about preparation. This is about um, focusing on our process this week and, and preparing to, um, you know, play – you know, our very best and adding another layer to what we're doing um, and being more intentional in our practice and, and then when it's time to flip the switch to uh, performance, uh, play more consistently uh, when it's time to play. So with that, we'll open it up to questions. Hi, Coach, right here. What was your reaction this weekend to uh, jumping three spots in the AP pool? Right Where here, are Coach. we? I'm sorry. I didn't even know, and, and I'm not just bringing that up. I, I had no idea that we jumped up, because it's really not um, anything that that changes what we do and how we do it, right? I mean, it's kind of what, what I just talked about is the most important thing really is, is what we do on the practice field today and how we prepare. Um, you know, if, if it generates um, – you know, more buzz in terms of getting into the stadium and, and more fans, I'm all for it. Jump us up as high as you can. But it's really about our preparation that, that focuses my attention. I guess when you look back on those two postseason matchups with, with Nick Saban, I mean, do you look back at kind of lessons you've learned from those or, or things you wish you could have done differently, or was it just as simple as Alabama had better teams? They were extremely talented teams. Um, the, the 13 team was as physical as a football team that I've ever played against and have not played a team as, as physical. And then if you look at the perimeter skill that they had uh, in, uh, I think that was 19, it was amazing. So, you know, two different teams, but, uh, you know, just, just fabulous players on both sides of the ball. Brian, can you give us an update on the plan for guys like Garrett Dellinger and Major Burns this week, which you, their, their plan will be getting towards Saturday? Yeah. So Major Burns uh, is cleared uh, to participate, so he'll be out at practice today. So he, as you can imagine, will be in our game plan, and we expect him to play and, and be an important part of what we do. Uh, Garrett Dellinger is day-to-day. -day. Uh, he had a good weekend. He was here this weekend. As you can imagine, that's a little bit different because he's got to be able to take a load on that knee. And, you know, when you're coming back from a knee injury, it's easier to obviously not have to worry about running and cutting, but you've got to be able to take the load, and that's what we're working on right now. Uh, we think we're going to get them there, but it's, it's still a process because now we're going to add practice onto it. And so we got to see how he responds each day after practice. We, we had people leaning on him individually over the weekend. Now we're going to be leaning on him for a full practice, and we'll see how it goes. But he's making good progress. Uh, it'll be a soft cast. Uh, it's certainly the knee that's more the concern than it is the, the hand. Hey, Coach. Um, how do you plan to use the linebackers in this game? We saw a little bit of, like, Perkins and Ojolari right ne uh, on the, in the last game, and um, you've got a pro-style offense, and Gibbs is a unique challenge. I'm just curious as to what the roles will be for your linebackers. Well, I think it's important that, you know, the, the best players play, and, and I think we've seen consistently who those players are. Micah Baskerville's been playing, you know, really good football for us. Um, you know, obviously we want to get Ojolari on the field and, and Perkins. Th those guys are – you know, making plays and, and have had, um, for us, high production. So um, not that Greg has not and, and certainly has done a really nice job for us as well, but those are your high production guys. And so when you're playing a team like Alabama, um, if, if you know what you're doing at all, you better get your best players on the field. Uh, Coach, no matter who you're playing, it's always a talking point. We need to get pressure in the quarterback's face and make him uncomfortable and whatnot. But with this guy, it looks like the more he's allowed to play street ball and run around, that's when bad things happen for the defense. So how important is it to prevent those kind of things from happening? Yeah, I mean, I think it's, you know, making sure that um, you don't give up um, big plays. Uh, you got to minimize those, staying in coverage, um, 
you know, if he scrambles for a few yards here and there, um, that's going to happen within the realm of the, the structure of the offense or defense. But it's coming out of coverage. It's losing your eyes and not staying disciplined. If you've got a man, you've got to be able to lock on it. And then, you know, we've got to be able to tackle him when we get our opportunities. But you're absolutely right. I mean, I mean, he breaks down your defense when he scrambles, and he's so intuitive and can make those plays happen. I think what we're concerned more is, is turning in – uh, turning a smaller play into larger plays. Brian, now that you're facing Alabama day to day on a recruiting battles and that kind of thing, what are sort of the priorities in, in terms of positions and also maybe geographical areas uh, for you in this program as y'all try to flip the balance of power in this rivalry? Wow, there's a lot there. Uh, I don't know where to start. <laughs> um, Look, I mean, I think it starts with pulling your base, and I, and I think our base, you know, extends all the way up to the border, right, north of Baton Rouge. And so I think there's been a heightened focus to, on making sure that in the state of Louisiana we're not just, um, you know, we're not myopic in a sense that we're just in one geographical area. It's got to it's gotta really focus on the entire state. So I think, I think it starts there. Um, I think identification of um, 25s and 26s and making sure that we know all the players in this state and have done a really good job of identifying everybody in the state of Louisiana. So, um, look, you, this this adage of locking down the borders is it's like being a lockdown corner. You know, there are no lockdown corners. OK. Um, there are good corners, and there are corners that are elite. Uh, we can be elite in the state of Louisiana, uh, and that's what we need to do. I think you start there. Um, and, and then, you know, look, I mean, it's about filling the needs that we have currently in our program. You know, we're not there yet. I mean, unfortunately, we're probably going to have to dip back into the transfer portal a little bit. Um, we have some really good young players, and, and we're not going to forsake them. I mean, that's where we want to build this program. This program will be built on freshmen, but there are a couple of positions that still have, you know, holes in them that, that need to be supplanted with, with some transfers. But we're much better than we were last year. We'll get better this year, and then hopefully in another year, this is just about player development and bringing in freshmen. That's stage two in terms of getting to where we need to be to hopefully get to that final narrative of upstaging Alabama. But we're certainly not there yet. Right, right the middle. Um, just you and, and Nick, two elite coaches, right? How much do you savor the moments of going against fellow elite coaches? And you talk about the preparation. I'm curious. As a coach, do you all feel an added sense to have better preparation, or is that counterintuitive in big games where you've talked about before maybe doing less can be just as important? Well, I, I think it's all about what your players can execute on Saturdays, right? I mean, we can be the smartest guys in the room, but that doesn't really matter if they can't go out and execute it. So I think we're at that point both teams are. As we get into, what, week nine here, um, that it's about what your players, their strengths and weaknesses are, knowing your team and knowing what your team can execute at, at a higher level. So I think the good coaches now have kind of settled into, here's what we do, um, let's go do it well, and you got to go stop it. Um, so I think we're both at that level of, you know, we're going to do the things that we do. Um, yeah, there might be a wrinkle here or there because of self-scouting, and we might have had a tendency here or there, and they may have had a tendency, and we're going to try to break a couple of those, and they're going to try to break a couple of theirs. Um, but I think by and large, I think we know our strengths and weaknesses, and now it's about putting your kids in a good position where they can play fast and free and physical and, and, and be the best version of themselves going into November. In front here, uh, Brett Martel with AP. Um, two Pretty simple ones. One, just Alabama versus LSU historically. Um, from afar, what were your impressions of um, the significance of this matchup? Um, and second, not every school gets to have their highest profile games in November. Is that a fortunate thing that, you, that you're glad that's happening at this point in the season? Yeah, historical significance is, is one where 
you know, there is a clear rivalry between the programs that is that is real that you can feel, um, and that's long standing. Um, you know, it goes way back to you know just these two teams being original teams in the conference going against each other. So, um, but you know, I've come to know that you know a lot of these games that we play in the SEC have. Um, some interesting side notes along the way. And, and look, this one becomes even more because of the success that both programs have had. These are two teams that have won national championships within the last few years. So, you know, they bring on a lot of um, national notoriety as well. Um, you know, anytime you play a game like this that's conference, uh, you know, within your conference, they have to have significance, you know, historically. But you know, in, in real time, both teams are fighting for, you know, the SEC West. So uh, the games matter uh, when, when both teams are in a position for this game to have the kind of scrutiny that it does today. So, um, yeah, I, I think that this is what you're looking for if you're an Alabama fan or an LSU fan. Yeah, I mean, again, I, I would say that, you know, when you're looking at your schedule in the SEC, uh, when you have Alabama on your schedule in November, you know, this could be one of those where you check the box if you're not playing well. Or it could have huge significance. And, and I think in this instance, um, it certainly has much more significance than, than maybe it did uh, last year, you know, where, where they weren't in, in, in the, the race. So, um, yeah, I think you always want Alabama in November because both teams traditionally have been pretty good. Hey, Coach, uh, just right here. Um, so with Mason Taylor and Josh Williams, how important are those guys, especially as blockers this week when you're going up against someone like Will Anderson? Well, I think you have to employ, um, you know, schemes that that help out the tackles. You know, as I mentioned before, whether it's, you know, a tight end or a running back or you're sliding your protection there. But um, as I mentioned, um, they're pretty good on both sides. So uh, the ball's got to come out quickly. Uh, we've got to recognize that. Um, we're not going to be able to sit back there in the pocket and just kind of, you know, go through five progressions. I mean, the ball's got to come out quickly. We might, we're going to have to move the pocket. We're going to have to, you know, protect. Uh, we're going to have to max protect. Um, so we're going to have to do a little bit of all those things. Um, but certainly uh, additional players other than the offensive linemen will be involved in protection, no doubt. Yeah, Ron, right here, Ron Higgins, Tiger Details. Yeah. Have you seen, I guess, in the last couple of games, especially on film, it's noticeable that Jaden Daniels' confidence has increased in his receivers, like to make a play. So this is Dre Jenkins' touchdown. They're like, I can, just, I can do this and let, let him make a play. Can you, can you see the notice it a lot on film? Yeah, you can see it in practice. You know, I, I think there's much more of a, an understanding of where they're going to be and what they're doing, and he doesn't need to look them down, right? There was a lot of visual hookups, if you will, where he was waiting for that receiver. He can get the ball out of his hands now uh, without the receiver being uh, out of his break. And so that just takes time. Uh, and we just didn't have that time earlier in the season, and that's starting to build that kind of relationship that wasn't available to us earlier in the year. Yeah, hey, Coach, right here. Just kind of building on the run game a little bit. You guys seem to have really taken some great strides there the last two games, you know, second and third in manageable situations. Just how beneficial has that been for the offense, and in particular Josh Williams' role in that and, and him being uh, kind of really assertive the last couple of weeks in that respect? Yeah, you know, I think it's like anything else. You, you, you need to find some balance within your offensive structure. If you're so one-dimensional that you have to throw the ball uh, on those second and third down situations, then then the defense has the advantage in those those kinds of situations. And I think, you know, they got offensive staff, and I think Mike's done a really good job of, of making sure that through play calling, um, you know, there is a balance where you have to defend the run and you have to defend the pass. And, you know, that's been, that's been the philosophy from day one is that, you know, we better be equally as good at both um, depending on what we get. And I think we've done a pretty good job there. Hey, Coach, up top. Uh, I think you mentioned that you resourced Nick before you took the job, maybe called him about this LSU job. What was that phone call like and what did he tell you about? It was much more about the SEC. It was, it was much more of a general you know, uh, conversation. Um, 
he didn't give up any secrets about Etouffee or Louisiana or LSU. Um, you know, if, if he did, I would have bought that house on Highland that he lived in. Um, but uh, no, there was nothing that, that was that, that specific. Um, but it, it had just been a conversation about the SEC in particular. Hey, Coach, you mentioned last week that in order for the defense to start fast and not allow those early touchdowns, it's more mentally than it is physically. So what is your preparation for that defense to get prepared mentally? So that's, uh, that's the million-dollar question, right? I mean, you got the million-dollar question today. Um, you know, we're trying to figure that out, right? Do we, uh, you know, we all look at things that, that I need to do in terms of prep preparation for our players. What I started doing about uh, three weeks ago is I moved up some articulation or some uh, contact, uh, you know, 11 on 11 contact from when it would be 45 minutes into practice. I moved it up into the first 20 minutes of practice to kind of heighten that and get our guys ready immediately when they come out to practice that, hey, we're going to, we need to get after it. We need to be ready right away. Um, to build that in. Now that's only been a couple of weeks, so we're trying to build that in. You know, we're trying to look at uh, some quizzes before, you know, uh, on Saturday morning and, and, and making sure that we're sharp mentally. So we're looking at all those things uh, to make sure. And sometimes it's maybe it's just, you gotta go make a play. You know, let's make that catch, let's make that play uh, and get off to a good start. Hey coach, down here. Um, you come off a big win, you go to the bye week, and then you have a huge game now. How do you think the team has done of keeping the intensity level uh, through, the, through the bye week? I thought they were very intentional this week. Um, you know, today will be a big day for us, right? You want to make sure that, you know, when, when you take a, a few days, uh, you, you want them to stay sharp mentally and physically. It can't be just, hey, I'm going to roll up on the couch and just watch TV for two days. That's not going to work, and, and, and they know that. Um, so coming back today and having a really good day uh, will be important to us. Um, but, but I thought that the week was really good. I thought that they were focused, that the intentionality in terms of what they needed to do last week um, was work on some of the mistakes that had been made over the last couple of weeks. We cleaned those things up. Um, we got a bit of a preview of Alabama in terms of um, you know, their structure. Uh, and then we'll dive in a little bit deeper on Alabama today. So, uh, so far so good, but I think today's a big day for us. Coach, a game like this that gets so much media attention and there's going to be so many people seeing your player interviews and whatnot, I was just curious what you knew about Tommy Karam in terms of, you know, training the players for these interviews and getting them ready for, for media and, and how important is that when they represent the school on those big platforms? Yeah, I mean, I, I think – you know, I think Tommy's done traditionally a great job, um, but but I think it's also about um, our players understanding on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, what our process is and what we're doing. And, you know, we remind them every day about staying in the present. The most important thing is staying in the present. If they talk about what they're doing today and what their focus is today, um, it usually puts them in a good position. It's when they start thinking about last year's game or they start thinking about next week's game against Arkansas where they kind of get off track. But you know, staying in the present, talking about uh, their teammates instead of themselves, uh, and really uh, going day to day um, has been our advice to our guys, and, and it's worked really well. I think they've represented LSU football um, very well. Jaden's obviously had just a crazy year, you know, in general in Arizona to year and whatnot. I mean, just how have you seen him personally kind of handle all these ups and downs this past year? Well, I think it starts with he enjoys being here. I, I think he's in the right space mentally, first and foremost, because he really enjoys being here. I think he's been in a learning process. You know, he's learned a lot of football. And, and that growth process is really starting to benefit itself. And we're starting to see that come to fruition on the field. So um, I, I think more than anything else is he's in a good space. And because of that, you're seeing growth and you're seeing production happen at the same time. And I think any time as a coach, as a teacher, as an educator, when you see that with a player, you feel pretty good about where you're at. Uh, it's, it's early in the overall process, but as you said, it is week nine. Do you feel like your team is ready for this opponent at this time? 
Well, we have no choice um, <laughs> unless Alabama wants to forfeit. And I don't think that's in Nick's plans. Um, yeah, I mean, look, I, I think that this team, you know, understands the challenges but welcomes them at the same time. You know, it, it fights. This group fights and welcomes it. And I think more than anything else, they're fighting for something and, and not fighting against something. And that's a big change from where they were. And so I think they're excited about it. And they're excited about the challenge. They know it's a challenge. But um, just sensing them last week, um, they're excited about the challenge. Brian, just uh, any updates with on Jack Besh and John Emery heading into this week? Both positive. Um, they'll, they'll both practice today. Um, I'm, I'm certain Jack will practice. I didn't get a report from our training room on, on Emery, but I did get a report before I got in here on Jack, and he is much improved, and he was cleared to uh, get out on the practice field today. Thank you.